Hi, everybody. So I would like first to uh, thank the organizer for this meeting and inviting me. Oh, why is it? So it should wait for me now. Um, so I will talk about an artifact of the talk and the IAM registry, uh, which is basically a, an annotation and cross-referencing framework, but perhaps for you, uh, I, I can just say it will provide you with identifiers or URIs. Um, so very, very quickly, I would like to give uh, a tiny bit of, uh, of history uh, about where Miriam comes from. So um, initially, it's, it's a, a set of guidelines about of this uh, minimal information um, thing. So it's, it's about curation and annotation of quantitative biological model. And so that's, that's where the, 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 the name Miriam comes from. So that's a set of guidelines you have things like models must be encoded in, in machine readable format, uh, there should be links to publication and other things that are not relevant for us. But there is one point, of the last one, which is um, all the, the, the model must be annotated, and by annotated, uh, we mean uh, identified. And from that point on, I will stop, stop talking about models and just talk about identifiers that can be used for any kind of data. Um, so I will not tell you why identifiers are, are useful. I'm sure you all know uh, very well. But I mean, it's, it's really fundamental for, for, for us uh, to understand and reuse the data, do comparison, integration, search, conversion, and so on. Um, and I'd like to, to go very quickly about how oh, uh, over the, the past years, people uh, managed to identify things. Uh, so, so initially, for example, on the bond, so, uh, uh, some time ago, I uh, decided to use some kind of free text. And, and there were some issues, it was not consistent, so the same identifier was, was uh, sorry, different identifiers were used to, to represent the same thing, so that was not, not, not suitable. After that, we move on to, to some more structured format. And in this case, Biopax used to use a way which was ambiguous, so the same identifiers um, could actually represent several things that, that were very, very different. And, uh, and some people decided, oh, wait, what, why can't I go so I could just put the, the physical location, the URL, and that should be fine, however, there are various issues. As you can see here, I give an example of four, uh, and they are all linked to the same thing, so it's not unique. Uh, second, it's not parental, you all know URLs change uh, always over time. And another thing, it's location dependent, and one of the resources can uh, for example, not have funding anymore and, and not provide data anymore. Uh, so, so that's an issue. So if I use all these points, I have a list of characteristics any kind of useful identifier should have. So I basically wrote them and I have a few like standard compliance, resolvability, free to use, and, and so on. Um, so back in the time when, when we, we were uh, talking about models, I mean, Anyway, we needed to have identifiers, and we looked around, and, um, and basically everything that was there did not really fit the bill with all this characteristic I, I listed earlier. Um, so we decided to create something very simple, uh, basically composed of two things. Uh, one that we call the namespace, which basically identifies the data provider, and another one which is the identifier of a very uh, specific piece of data that is provided by the, this data provider. And this identifier is given usually by, by the data provider. And we, we just basically uh, completed this information and created uh, an identifier which, which, which is a, a URL in this case. And um, everything was great. A lot of people were very interested and started to use those and, and develop support for those. However, quite recently, um, a, a, few, a few people in, in the community started to come back to us and say, your, your URLs are, are, are fine, they're great, but they, they are not resolvable. Actually, they, they were not directly needed to use web services, so, so they were not fully happy about that. Uh, but I would say it was only a small portion of the community. But anyway, we, we decided to work on that and, and introduce the URL form. Um, and we did the, a domain name and we found identifiers at all, so hence the, the, the identifiers at all. But basically, the, the structure of the URL is, is pretty much the same. It follows more as the same rules. So, so what, what does identifier.org provide? It's really resolvable persistent identifiers. And I should, ask, uh, um, I should add as well that they are location independent. 
Um, and you can identify uh, different kind of things from the data provider to the resource or where you can actually access the data or, or information about the data and towards the, up to uh, the, the entity itself, the, the single piece of information you're interested in. Um, you, you have ways to customize the behavior when you query it. Um, and you have other characteristics like committee driven, curated, and things like that that come from the fact that uh, it's actually built on uh, something called the MIA registry, um, which uh, I don't have time to present now, but we, we can talk a bit later about it if you are interested. So uh, just two examples of what you get if you query it. Uh, so um, if you carry it with a web browser and you put one of those nice URLs, um, you, you, you will be uh, provided with a choice. The idea is you will have uh, the list of all the places on the web uh, where you can access the data or information about the data. And you, you will have a bit more information. You will see, for example, where are the servers physically located, uh, you will see the uptime and things like that, and so you will be able to choose and just click on the one you want to use and you will be redirected there. But I said um, you, you can also customize behavior, so if you don't want to use a web browser, you can also access this information as RDF. Um, and I said you, you also, um, if you wish, you can be redirected directly to a specific resource. Um, there are several ways to achieve this. Um, I, I, I can to uh, explain that later as well if you're interested. And the idea is uh, you will be able to, to directly uh, see the, 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 the data and with a, a banner on top that tell you you can also access this information from other places. Um, and so that's, that's it for my presentation. So I, I know I've been very, very brief and not going into details and describe all the features. But if you're interested, we can talk now or, or later on about, about that. Thank you.